Hey folks, welcome back to another video. Today it's about uh, mimicking the behavior of the DSEQ3 with Bitwig native devices. So we have here a DSEQ3 and we also dialed in your slope of 3.0 at the top here. And you can see the pink noise test tone here. We have selected pink noise here, which is equally powered per octave. And you can see the pink noise is peaking here equally across the threshold line. And the threshold line is, of course, with the slope of 3.0. So when we dial in 4.5 here, which is more easy on the low end, um, you can see the top end here is removed more and the low end is barely touched. So this is, for me, the proof that 3.0 3 here as a slope is exactly or matches exactly pink noise and pink noise is nice for mixing down tracks or identif identifying uh, peaking resonances or maybe over amplified um, yeah, frequencies in your mix down. And also uh, here on the EQ plus you can see it's a straight line because we dialed in here a tilt setting of 3 dB per octave. So it also matches pink noise and pink noise with this setting is on the EQ plus straight line. And you can also use this to mix down your track and look or identify uh, frequencies that are over amplified in your mix down, of course. Uh, it's not like that I'm saying you need to make your track a straight line. That's not what I'm saying. You can have dips in there, but maybe the bass, um, which is peaking here around here, right? And the hi-hats should match on an equally line, something like this. So you know then you have an equally balanced mix down. Um, you can also go down here in volume, you can see it on the on the line here. It's pretty straight, right? Okay. So with this EQ3 here, yeah, it tries to catch us all the resonances that go above this threshold line. And you can see this here in the display. And we also have a attack setting and the release setting where we can ease out the reaction time. You can see uh, it's getting slower, reacting slower to the uh, peaking frequencies. And yeah, just go back. So we have kind of a compressor setting here. We have a threshold setting where you can decrease the threshold and we have a slope setting. Okay, so inside of Bitwig Studio, we have now loud split and the loud split device basically splits the signal into quiet, loud and everything in between parts. And it's kind of the same thing. Um, we can select the device and bring in a tilt setting of 3 dB per octave. And you can now see here it's equally distributed, right? It's almost a straight line. Maybe bring down your Denise setting and then bring down the threshold of the loud part here. You can see the red flashes here. These red lines are frequencies that are going above the threshold line. And it's also equally distributed. So we have the same amount of things going over um, the red line here on each kind of part of the spectrum. So it's equally distributed. If you go lower, then of course you catch more things, but it's, you know, it's not like that you have only red things here and here it's everything is yellow, it's equally distributed. So that's important. So to remove these things, these red flashes, all you have to do now is to um, disable the loud part. So everything that flashes red now here is completely removed, completely gone, deleted. It's not pushed down like on the DSEQ3, um, where it acts like a compressor. Um, it's completely removed from the spectrum. And you can also hear this when you um, play here, maybe a drum loop or something like this. Um, you can hear it that these frequencies are missing. So if you like the sound of this, you can use it this way, of course, it's no problem. But you also can switch this back on and maybe just dial down here the loud part and maybe make everything that crosses this line 20 dB quieter. So it's also kind of, um, you know, reducing resonances in a kind of a smart way. And we also can dial in here the rise setting, which is attack and fall, which is release to ease out 
what happens when these frequencies cross the threshold, how fast this device reacts to that, and um, how fast it reacts to when something goes up below the threshold, right? So it's kind of the same thing that what you do in the DSEQ3 just here with the native device. And I want to show you this in the next example with the drum loop. So in this example here, we have like a drum bass drum loop and it's not very well frequency balanced. Um, we have a lot of hi-hats here and the kick drum is a bit too quiet, right? But that's the point. I want to make a point here. So in the DSEQ3, we can now see here that the hi-hats are peaking above the threshold of the 3 dB uh, slope. And the snare is maybe a bit too over amplified right or it's resonating too much and it's it's actually not a problem um, but you can identify here certain things right so at least when the kick or when the snare drum is peaking here the kick drum also should peak in the same way as the hi-hats and the snare and the kick so most this more like looks like this the kick drum is too quiet for me um, so maybe bring down here the snare drum also. Okay, so now it tries here to remove only the, the hi-hats. Maybe ease out here the... settings. So, and when we disable here this EQ3, it sounds completely different, right? So the DSEQ is basically EQing for us and removing these frequencies because they are not really balanced uh, with pink noise. So this is how you do it basically more or less with the DSEQ3. And I want to disable this and want to show you this here with a loud split device. So here it's the same. Maybe the sable or maybe solely or just the loud part. Bring the rise down, the fall part down. We can see when we bring this down, the hi-hats are peaking at first. And then it it's followed by the kick and the snare. So we can bring this down here in loudness, everything that goes above this line. Maybe we it more over so we don't touch the kick and the snare something like this and then you bring in the rest and then you can play around with rise and fall So it's a nice way of identifying problems in the mix down or on certain sounds and maybe um, pull them down. As you can see, it's peaking way too much. And with the loud split on, we bring this down and ease it out a bit. So maybe you have an old drum loop, a classic drum loop uh, from back in the days, so old funk drum loop with a lot of uh, high end content. You can use the loud split here and bring down the loudness just of the bits that are going above the threshold line. And it's actually very useful. And I think I am trying this trick or this workflow out in, um, in my next songs, my next mix downs. Uh, instead of using DSEQ3 and see how it works out for me. Um, because it's actually a neat device and it's in, in Bitwig Studio already included. It doesn't have too much latency. And um, yeah, I can put some devices or some stuff on loud and mid and quiet uh, in these boxes here and maybe act on certain things. So um we will see. But this is what I discovered uh, lately and made some experiments with it. 
And I think it's a nice way of using this device instead of, you know, making some creative things. You can also use this for mastering. So this is what I want, want to show you in this video, basically. Um, if you have some more discoveries with this, let me know. Um, I think for now, that's it. Thanks for watching. Leave a, leave a like if you like the video, thumbs up or leave a comment if you have some questions. And thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.